Welcome to uh, say goodbye to text automation and flakiness using uh, AI tools. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, how you can use automation and uh, AI tools in automation to reduce flakiness in your um, framework. So first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Amit and I'm the head of solution engineers at Test Project. Um, and I'll be uh, walking you through today how you can leverage AI tools um, to achieve more stable automations and stable, more stable tests overall. Um, it will be uh, very detailed, so uh, not, not very, but it will be detailed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A section. I'll be looking um, at the Q&A section, the entire presentation and, and from start and throughout uh, the entire session. So let me know uh, if there is anything you're looking for. Uh, if you need uh, anything specific, we will also be uh, at our booth in the end uh, at the project booth. So let's begin. First of all, uh, let's talk about the session outline. The first thing we're gonna cover is how common test automation framework um, architecture looks like. From there, we will continue with main factors for automation flakiness. Then we will go over how the AI tools can help and reduce test flakiness, save us valuable time, a lot of resources, and reduce the time uh, that our actual tests are executing. And then we'll also have uh, a special uh, time for Q&A uh, section, Q&A um, in the end. So let's begin. So the current test automation framework uh, looks uh, uh, similar to this. Uh, we have a programming language, well, language of choice. It can be C-sharp, Java, JavaScript. Then we have um, an automation framework of choice, usually uh, one of these, uh, BDD, page object model, um, and similar. Then we'll have um, a driver, a web driver if we're using Selenium, or uh, we'll have a UI automate or, or XQT test, test if we're using Appium. So this is how the common test automation framework looks like. And now let's understand how AI tools can help us um, to achieve uh, more stable tests um, and less time uh, used on developing. So first of all, before we go to how we can reduce this, let's talk about what causes this uh, effect, this automation flakiness. So automation flakiness can occur by multiple reasons. Uh, we listed a few here, we're not gonna go uh, and, and about all of them as we only have uh, 20 minutes, but uh, some of them are false positive reported actions, basically actions in your automation that have reported successfully, um, but did not actually do anything. They had no effect on the UI for some reason, they had no effect on the application, and et cetera. Mobile devices variation is a very common uh, factor for automation flakiness. Uh, in today's uh, day and age, we have so many different mobile devices uh, and variations, and we have so many different configurations um, we also have virtualization, uh, sc different screen resolutions, variety of mobile devices. All of these uh, affect how stable our automation is. Different things like internet connection speed, different loading times um, can also affect that. For example, if you're using the same application on uh, dev or on production, it can have major difference in how fast it works. Um, and a lot of things can affect that as well. Uh, we also have dynamic and auto-generated locators and a lot of applications and frameworks. We have a lot of applications that have a very complex structure uh, that generate uh, ambiguous or invalid locators. So how do we deal with that um, in this project? Is basically we developed an approach to reduce flakiness by including um, three AI components. Uh, these three AI components are the automation assistant, which is 
a mechanism that automatically detects false positive actions. The adaptive weight is a mechanism that combats uh, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, automation enemies, which is timing. Uh, the adaptive weight basically um, is a global setting which can be increased or decreased according to the application speed, which automatically weights uh, the amount of time needed uh, for any element in the application to load. So all of the environment conditions will be sufficient for the automation action to succeed. Uh, the self-healing is a mechanism that automatically constructs multiple locators and alternative locators for a single element. So this allows us to find this element using multiple ways instead of just one. So our automation will not break uh, if the element, for example, is moved, or maybe if the element name is changed, uh, we have we cover multiple ways uh, to find this element. And, basically heal the automation. Uh, we have a question, uh, uh, do we have open source AI tools? So basically, um, test project is uh, built on open source, such as Selenium and Appium, and test project itself is a free software. So it's not, a, 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 the agent itself is not entirely open source, uh, but it's free software. So, um, and the components it's built on are open source, as well as we have an open SDK, uh, which is a completely open source uh, solution. So let's move on and understand how does it actually work. So I know it, it looks a bit complicated and a bit uh, maybe intimidating, but first let's talk about how the common automation without AI works. Well, basically looking for an element, we either find the element and then perform an action, and if we could find the element and we could perform the action, uh, our uh, action succeeded and the test passed. So this is a common uh, automation with AI. So if we didn't find the element, our action failed because we couldn't find an element and the test failed or um, whatever behavior we have defined um, for such exception. If we could find the element, but we could not perform the action, usually the test will fail. So basically this is how automation framework looks without AI. Uh, we have a test, we're asking for the element, then we are performing uh, the action, and then we get a, a simple result, uh, succeeded or failed. But let's, look, let's take a look uh, what happens when we combine AI with automation. So first of all, we run a step. Then we run a second step. So we, are, we find the element. If we find the element, we perform an action. If the action was performed, again, we pass the test. Pretty easy so far. If we couldn't find the element, we apply adaptive weight, which essentially is uh, waiting for the element to become available within the page. And, and all of this happens automatically. Uh, by default, which is, as I mentioned, is a global setting, which you can change um, for a specific step or throughout your entire test. So the adaptive weight automatically waits for the element to be found. Let's say the element still was not found. Uh, what do we do then? So we waited for the element, uh, explicitly waited for the element, and we couldn't find it. So. Here is where a basic uh, automation without AI will fail. But what we do, we invoke self-healing. Self-healing is a second mechanism that, as I mentioned before, have multiple locators. So we can check different locators because we have at least three to five loc different locators for a single element. So uh, the test will not fail so quickly. Uh, we check which element uh, can heal this step. Uh, and now we go to uh, found element again. Let's say we couldn't find the element. Again, even uh, using five different locators, should we now fail the test? No, not yet. We apply the automation assistant logic. And what the automation assistant logic does is basically uh, it's asking a few questions and calculating whether or not the last step 
was a false positive action. If the last step was a false positive action, we simply rerun the previous step and then trying to find the element again. Because a lot of the time in automation, if we had a false positive action, for example, we clicked login, now we expect to be in the login page, but let's say for some reason, login was reported as fast, but we didn't actually move in the page to the, uh, uh, to the logged in state. So the false positive action happened. So the step after will fail. It's very common in automation. So if that happens, the, the automation assistant knows how to detect such cases and run the previous step again, and then try to find the element again. So there are basically three mechanisms um, that are applied when a step is not found. Let's say we could find uh, the element and we are performing an action. If the action failed, meaning that we tried to perform an action, but the action itself failed, um, maybe because it's not the element that we intended to get or something happened in the way, the automation assistant again kicks in and trying to change the result. It's trying to rerun the previous step and then run uh, the step again. So basically all of these uh, mechanisms are here to ensure that our test will always pass. And we have one more setting which allows us to set a pass anyway value. If or if on our specific step, we don't care to pass the step anyway, we can simply apply this logic and then our test will not fail as well. So this is how uh, we can leverage AI to basically heal our test. So this is how the execution flow looks like. Uh, you can see that we have uh, over 1,500 different actions to choose from. Um, and basically, a step is made by an action and an element to perform this action on. So this is how it looks uh, in, the, in the actual uh, um, scheme. So we have multiple locators built for a single element, as you can see here. We have an action to perform. If we couldn't find the element, an adaptive weight is applied, as you can see here. The automation assistant is applied, the self filling is applied uh, in between. And we can also set on the step whether or not we should fail the test or not. And then you can see the action was performed successfully, but a lot of safety mechanisms um, are standing between an action succeeded or failed. So let's move on. So, the role of AI tools in test automation uh, is basically to improve our day-to-day -day work. They help testers with creating uh, robust locator strategies, which are based on the application type. Of course, all of this happens automatically. You just need to uh, apply the strategy type. Um, automatically apply self-healing when automation breaks. So this is very easy. It's all being done automatically. Uh, using the AI tool. So you don't need to build multiple locators. They are already built um, during development. And then the AI can use them during execution to stabilize the test. When automation breaks as a result of element change, we can apply the self-healing and then change the locator to the faster locator. So the, the locator that could detect the element um, in the least amount of time can be uh, up in the priority to be used later on in, in um, on next execution. So basically we can also make our automation more efficient um, by applying this logic. So it's also used for eliminate, eliminating failures that result from loading time, invalid element states or environment factors. And this is what the adaptive way does. It doesn't just wait for no reason. It just waits for this specific element or more correctly, the first locator that is defined in the self healing. So it's basically um, a combination of two components working together. 
It can be used to determine false positive actions and automatically repair them. This is what the automation assistant does. It basically looks for this action and when it detects them, it goes back in the test, run, run, rerunning the previous step and automatically repair them. It can predict hidden steps and execute them as a part of the automation flow. Again, the automation assistant does it automatically. And it also provides us with visual testing and image analysis when all other methods fail. So thank you all for listening. Uh, we have uh, left five minutes for Q&A and I see we already have a question. So I see we have a question about the uh, SDK. So basically, um, the AI components are built um, into the agent as a costume script. So when you are using our open SDK, you are basically saying, I want to write all of these things myself. I don't need an automation assistant. I don't need self-healing. I want to write, um, I want to write my own code. So of course you will uh, essentially have to uh, give up on, on, the cap on some of the capabilities, not all of them, of course, but some of them. And because of that, um, when you're using the open SDK, you're basically, um, what you are trying to do is develop your own code. Um, and that's basically mean, I want to uh, combat these automation issues uh, using my own skills. So this is why um, using this as a recorded script is very strong. So we have a question about how AI find uh, the pulse positive. By multiple um, calculations, um, it checks for how fast the action was performed, uh, whether or not we can find the next element, whether or not we could find the previous element. Um, it works uh, by applying a lot of uh, logical um, ca calculations and logical um, things that happen based on the test and that specific automation to understand whether or not we should rerun the previous step. So let me just go back to that slide and show you this in work. So basically we can see that um, when an element is not found, uh, we can detect a, a step um, that is a false positive step, and then we can simply rerun it. And then we look for the element one more time. So we, again, rerun the entire uh, path. Let me see if we have uh, any more questions. So let's answer live. That has been answered live. That has been also answered live. Um, so I think uh, we're pretty much done. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Amit, for sharing your experience with us today. 